It seems like the Me Too movement is now starting to backfire on women. All that and more in today's video. So a paper came out recently that looked at the impact of the Me Too movement on academia, and it actually shows that post Me Too, women's productivity fell largely due to fewer collaborations with male researchers. Not the paper shows that this drop is most pronounced at universities where the perceived risk of sexual harassment accusations is highest. So the actual findings comparing research before and after the movement are right here. And as you can see, after the Me Too movement, collaborations with male researchers inside the same institution fell to close to zero. Oh my God, that's insane. That men feel like if they accidentally say the wrong thing, they could be canceled or fired. She also notes that institutions that have clear policies on sexual harassment help reduce this perceived risk. And this isn't just in academia. You know, honestly, I really understand this point of view. I actually have a rule uh, when it comes to work and when it comes to working with women. I work in a mostly male dominated, dominated industry, so it's not really an issue for me per se but we still do have a couple of women that work in the office. Now, my rule is that I will never be in a room by myself with a woman and have a door closed. Like the door has to be open. And generally speaking, if I'm talking to the person inside the room, I stay at the door where other people can not see me. If there's a camera, then I don't mind being inside the room. However, I will still keep the door open. And honestly, I work with a bunch of fantastic people. There hasn't been any sexual harassment charges at work or anything like that. However, it's simply a way to protect myself. And luckily, I'm not working in an environment where this kind of behavior is interrupting my or my colleagues works. But I could definitely see my behavior being problematic in a different kind of work setting if I constantly had to work with people. My job is very is very solo, so I don't really need to talk to people all day, although my job is talking to people literally all day. The paper also cites a 2018 study which showed that 60% of male managers are uncomfortable participating in common activities with women due to the same concerns. And a curious finding of the study was that men make up for the loss in this collaboration by just collaborating more with other men, whereas women don't make up for it at all. And the author concludes her findings by saying that Me Too was important for raising awareness, but it's also increasingly important for institutions to have really clear sexual harassment guidelines. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that because like, if your guidelines aren't clear and people are allowed to abuse it, you get situations like we were having when the me too movement like had started i remember like the first second year of the me too there was a lot of people a lot of creeps being exposed which i think is fantastic however there are a lot of college athletes that just lost scholarships even after being proved innocent they were like unfortunately uh you have been labeled as a rapist and because of that even if you there's no evidence even if you've been proven innocent we can't let you back into the school. You're losing your scholarship. You're losing everything. Come back next semester. Now, with that many people, and like these are, we're talking about like college athletes in the US, right? Like college athletes in the US like actually bring money to the college. If colleges are willing to throw away these athletes based off of a accusation with absolutely zero proof, why would I, a full grown adult who is not legally protected because I'm a minor, why would I ever put myself in a position where I am at risk of being accused? Because all it takes, all it takes is one bad day, right? I'm six foot three. Most of my female coworkers are like five foot one. I think the tallest person uh, where I work that's a woman is like maybe five foot eight. If I'm in a room with this person and she screams for whatever reason, it's my word against her words. And guess what? Nine times out of 10, they're probably going to believe her, not me. Due to be published in the journal Organizational Dynamics has found that following the Me Too movement, men are significantly more reluctant to interact with their female colleagues. A few highlights from the research that include is dangerous. 27% of men avoid one-on-one -on -one meetings with female coworkers. Yep, that's right. Almost a third of men are terrified to be alone in a room with a woman. 21% did I not just say that? Did I not just say that I will not spend any time in a room by myself with a woman for this exact reason? I'm not the only one. Percent of men said they would be reluctant to hire women for a job that would require close interaction, such as business travel. 19% of men would be reluctant to hire an attractive woman. The data above was collected in early. Well, let's 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 break that statement down. 19% of men would not uh, feel comfortable hiring an attractive woman. Now I can understand that, but I don't think that's purely just because of the me too movement. One, if you're working in a male dominated field and you have a lot of male coworkers and then all of a sudden you bring a very attractive woman into the fold, you're going to, you're for sure going to get a bunch of guys hitting on her. And in that instance, 
Yeah, I fully agree. Men should not be hitting on women in the workplace. It's not the place to do it. Do that outside and only if your coworker is okay with it and only if you're also uh, single. Don't be doing don't be doing no crazy stuff in my office or whatever like that. That definitely brings on things to think about. How is the team going to feel about this? Are they going to be distracted? And no, I don't think it's the woman's fault. However, it's my problem. And if it's my problem, I'm going to solve it however I see fit. And if that means not hiring you to make sure that the team stays focused, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And on top of that, when someone hires a woman, it isn't as simple as hiring a man. Because if you look at the statistics, men take less days off than women. Men take less sick days off than women. Women go on maternity leave. Men's paternity leave is shorter than women's maternity leave. Or any of these things, the woman's fault. No, it's not her fault. However, from a business standpoint, if you gave me two candidates that had the exact same qualifications all over, and one of them had a 70% chance of maybe asking no time off throughout the year, and the other one had a 30% chance of asking no time off during the year, you would probably choose the employee that is most likely to not ask for time off and as of now, that has been statistically mostly men. And because of that, I would be way less inclined to hire an attractive woman between the ages of like 22 to 35, because those are generally ages where women give birth. Is this shitty? Is this unfair? 100%. However, it's business. And I, I'm, I'm looking at it from a purely business standpoint. 2019 from workers across a wide range of industries. Researchers had asked the same questions, albeit to different people, and with more of a focus on future expectations in early 2018, just as Me Too was in full swing. And depressingly, things appear to have got worse. In 2018, for example, 15% of men said they would be more reluctant to hire women for jobs that require close interpersonal interactions with women compared to 21% in 2019. Eesh, it's getting worse. Earlier this year, I had the displeasure of dealing with a female coworker harassing a male coworker. A male subordinate comes to me to report the female subordinate. She decided that she wanted his opinion on fellatio techniques. She asked him because he's open to get it. What the hell? I went with him to, to report. HR calls everyone involved to get their side. At this point, the female employee realizes the male employee snitched and begins badmouthing him. HR hands down punishment based on zero tolerance policy. Three days unpaid suspension for the male victim, but only one day unpaid suspension to the female employee because she's pregnant and we can't cause too many problems. What does you being pregnant have to do with your behavior at the company? That's what I want to know. What does you being pregnant have anything to do with you being someone who's respectful at a company? I don't care if you're a man, woman, cat, dog. If you're working at my company, I don't care what kind of life you're living. You will give your fellow coworker the respect that they deserve. And if two people are messing up in the same way, they should be handed down the same exact kind of punishment. This is the kind, this is the kind of things that men in the workplace despise. I do something bad, she does something bad, I get the worst punishment because I'm a guy and because she's a girl, or because she's pregnant, or because she's on her period, or because she's premenopausal, or because she's menopausal. Unfortunately, women have been given special treatment throughout life, which honestly, I'm not even upset about. But when you start giving special treatment in the work, and then you're expecting me to be happy about it and to be to work with this person and to want to hire them or to want to... to to do uh, co-ops with them. When you see things like that, it's only going to increase the amount of men that are gonna pull away from ever actually working with women and doing collabs with them. The male employee came back from suspension with legal representation. The female employee came back and all the male employees avoided her and any situation where they would need to be alone with a female employee. I understand. It's not just men who are afraid of women, by the way women also appear to be increasingly wary of hiring women. The 2018 survey results found that more than Even women can't stand women. than 10% of men and women said they expected to be less willing than before to hire attractive women. Note, 
The 2019 results for women are not yet public. Internalized misogyny really is a bitch. There's been a lot of talk. I am so tired of the term internalized misogyny. That puts the blame on men for women's behavior. Women, you want to be treated as equals? You want to be treated with respect? Stop using terms like internalized misogyny for describing another woman's behavior. Pardon my French. Once women start taking more accountability for their actions in the workforce and stop blowing things out of proportion, they'll start receiving more respect from their male colleagues. Are there a bunch of guys that are going to take advantage of this and still um, try their hand at dipping it in the cookie jar? 100%. Are there still going to be men that are going to be disrespectful towards you? 100%. But I can tell you that a vast majority of people, a vast majority of men would probably be way more respectful towards women if women simply took accountability for their actions and stopped blaming everything on men with terms like internalized misogyny. I mean, grow up. Men are afraid to even shake a woman's hand in case she thinks it's harassment easier to just okay now that's a little that's a little bit much if you're afraid to shake a woman because you think it's harassment you stick your hand out and then you let her make her move don't be aggressive okay any guy who shakes a woman's hands and then like he reports it as harassment like come on bro come on relax avoid contact altogether what's really well yeah i do i do actually avoid a lot of contact <laughs> with women like i don't i don't hug no shoulder pats no nothing People actually think I'm a very cold person when they first know me because like I refuse to touch them in any kind of way except for a, a, a firm handshake. At that point, they're like, oh, okay, he's just like a polite person. But I can kind of understand it, yeah. Interesting about this study, however, is that it thoroughly debunks the argument that men are confused about what constitutes unacceptable behavior. Now, here's a quick one about a gal who she, as well as her female co-workers, are having a meltdown because a guy at work isn't paying attention to them. And as I say, women, uh, they need attention and validation the same way plants need sunlight and water. And how if a guy rejects them, either rejects their advances, doesn't pay attention to them, they lose their freaking minds. Title. A Note, the women that behave like this are also called children. You shouldn't hang around those kind of people unless you like headaches. This is not true of all women. Please be clear. A colleague at work, a 27 year old male of one year, refuses to socialize with me, a 24 year old female, or any of the women in our office. Oh, the travesty. There are plenty of other horrible things going on in the world, but nothing is as horrible as a guy, God forbid, not paying attention to you and your friends. She says here, hi all. I'm posting this on alternative uh, alternative site because I know a few of my friends are following me on here and I don't want this spilling out until I have some clear thoughts on what I want to do. Oh, you're trying to say you don't want any drama because something tells me you like drama. So early last year, our firm hired Dan, a 27 year old male. In the first few weeks, he was really quiet and didn't talk much and that's just how we thought he was. Every conversation with him was short and to the point and never deviated from work, aside from pleasantries, have a nice weekend, etc. About two months ago, he started becoming a bit more friendly with the guys in our office and they would hang out every so often after work and have normal conversations. Isn't it interesting that she and her friends are really paying close attention to what this guy's doing? That's what I'm asking myself. Why do you care? Like, I have a couple of my coworkers. I have a coworker that I've probably had an exchange of 10 minutes total since I've worked there. We're going on two years now and we've probably spoken a total of 10 minutes. And guess what? I have not thought about it or bothered him about it. And guess what? He probably has never even, it's probably never even crossed his mind once because we have better things to do. Honestly, the fact that this woman is writing a Reddit post about some guy not talking to her is kind of creepy. Guys get called creepy all the time for like the smallest things ever. This, this is creepy. However, when any, whenever any of the girls in the office try to do so, he would quickly ch uh, change the conversation back to just work or not reply. Even now, after a year of Dan working with us, he straight up refuses to socialize with the girls in the office and he's making them feel uncomfortable. Uh. Uncomfortable by not socializing with you. Do you understand the topsy-turvy 
amount of loopholes you need to jump through to get uncomfortable because someone doesn't want to talk to you. Girl, the universe does not revolve around you and your problems. Please get your head out your butt. Oh, now he's the bad guy. He's making us feel uncomfortable. Maybe he's sticking to business. Maybe he's worked at a place where the girls act like it's high school and wants nothing to do with it. Or maybe he's become very RP'd, understands about MG Tau, things like that, knows the Mike Pence rule, and he's doing that for a good reason. But he's making you uncomfortable. He avoids any discussion of himself outside of work-related events and future plans and doesn't ask any of the girls either. Aware as he is, what can I only assume, pretty good friends with the guys in the office. Even on work meals out to celebrate events, he's only doing the bare minimum when it comes to conversation with the girls, where again with the guys, he talks to them like there is no problem whatsoever. I don't know if I'm overreacting. You sure about Yes. Yes. 100% you are overreacting. Mind your business. That... But one of the girls is considering going to HR about this because she is saying it's creating a hostile work environment. Dan treats us like he treats clients we work with, cordial and strictly about business, and it's wearing thin now. Any advice is appreciated. Mind your business. That's my advice to you. Okay. She asked for advice, so I'll give some advice. You and your friends need to grow the F up. You're 24 years old, so I'm assuming all the female co-workers are probably in the 20s. We all know what generation they're in between the Z-tards and the Millennials. And they, she's certainly behaving like a bunch of Z-tards and, and Millennials. Your work is a place of business. To earn a paycheck, to pay for your living expenses, or to build a career. Not high school. But she's acting like it's high school. If this guy doesn't want to talk to you, that's his business. He probably has experience where BS goes on, gossiping and drama and turmoil, which you're creating drama, and wants nothing to do with it. And given how you're acting here and saying that it's an unpleasant work environment or some BS like that, and think about going to HR, gee, you wonder why he doesn't want to talk to you. Problem is this, you can't handle the fact that a guy doesn't want to pay attention to you, that a guy isn't flirting with you, asking you out and all that, and it's driving you freaking crazy. See, I agree that the work environment is a place for work. I have a couple of coworkers that I would probably hang out with grab a beer with them because they're great guys. I don't. I don't call them after work. Sometimes we send each other memes, but that's where it stops. And the only reason why I do this is because I want to keep my workplace professional. I do this with my, my, my male colleagues and even more so with my female colleagues, right? I will talk to them about non-related things, but I don't have phone numbers. I don't send email. I don't send that memes. I don't send text messages. If I have to talk to a female coworker, I send it in an email, right? It's just, I find it's easier like that. I find it's more simple. Even my male colleagues that we have a group chat, uh, we all send it there and we have one of our bosses in there as well, which keeps everything above board. Work is for work. If you wanna be friends with someone outside of work, that is a mutual decision. And if the other person doesn't wanna be a part of that friendship, you leave them alone. Many people, including myself, only became aware of the Me Too movement in 2017 when Rose McGowan, a white wealthy woman who was a famous actress, brought it up. But it was actually started all the way back in 2006 by Tarana Burke, an African-American social activist. Women of color have been speaking up about sexual abuse in low-income workspaces for ages, but they never garnered the same attention as a rich white actress. Well, isn't this awesome? It's like, bro, how many, how many buzzwords can you use? How many, it's a woman of color. It's a rich white lady. Like, God damn. And I'm, I'm Asian and I'm a woman. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, it's like the, the victim Olympics. That's how I see this. And mind you, I'm black and I'm tired of hearing these people whine, including black Chinese, Puerto Rican, Mexican, roaches, butterflies. Well, you know what? I think I'm going to end the video for here uh, today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you think that the Me Too movement is backfiring or is this just normal? While you're down there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we just hit 300 subs.
If you don't want to help, remember, at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you want to see more of my face, be sure you click the video you see on screen right now.